Hello and welcome. This is the International Service of Adventist World Radio in English from Pune. Today in our program, we have music from Candice Johnson and the Melashenko family singers. We also have a health message for each of you. Ending our program with a thought from God's Word on how you can maintain a vibrant spiritual walk with God. I'm Maureen. I'm Sharad. And you're listening to Adventist World Radio, The Voice of Hope. Here's a song by Candice Johnson, The Potter. some clay he molded it fashioned it caused it to obey and soon he had a vessel he could use it held his food it gave him life the water he would lose but then I heard the vessel Slipped and fell It's broken now No one knows how To put it back again Oh my life Was like A vessel made of clay It fell apart And my broken heart Would always go astray But Jesus made a song on Adventist World Radio, The Voice of Hope. We are glad Dr. Chitra could be with us. She is going to talk about diet. We spend billions of dollars every year on diets and weight control paraphernalia, yet the results are dismal. For many, permanent, successful weight control is more difficult to achieve than victory over drugs, tobacco or alcohol. Wouldn't it be better to just stay fat rather than jumping from diet to diet? If a person is going to skip from one diet fat to another, lose pounds now and gain them back later, then yes, it would be safer to remain fat. Research shows that this yo-yo effect gradually depletes important body tissues such as muscle and bone. Eventually, it weakens the body so that it becomes more susceptible to disease and less able to shed excess fat. But being fat isn't helpful. 
excess weight impairs health and shortens life. As little as 10 to 15 pounds of extra weight produces measurable changes that can lay the foundation for degenerative disease. And for every 10 pounds of overweight, a lifespan can be shortened by as much as a year. So what is the answer? People who are overweight need major revisions in thinking and attitudes. The scenario played out in millions of lives goes something like this. A few weeks on the latest wonder diet, have the jaws wired, take a series of shots of pills, check into a fat farm, presto, down goes the weight. Celebrations, new clothes. But within days, these people resume their former eating patterns and lifestyle. In a few weeks or months, the lost pounds are back, usually with an extra bonus. Weight control programs usually fail because they are short-term fixes for long-term problems. It's time to face the reality that obesity is a serious and life-threatening disease. Managing obesity is much more than a dietary problem. Like diabetes, hypertension, alcoholism or smoking, obesity requires a comprehensive approach to lifestyle changes. Make a note of a few points. The first one, make a lifelong commitment. If binges or other serious lapses occur, the commitment continues. With this kind of commitment, you can get up when you fall, start again and persevere. Number two, identify problem areas. You must identify and change those habits that cause obesity. This may be as simple as eliminating soft drinks or cutting back on fats and oils. Or it may require you to completely restructure your eating patterns and lifestyle. You may need to deal with events in your past which caused you to turn to food. Many people benefit from counseling. Number three, willingness to change. A willingness to change is critically important. You must want to lose weight, not just to please others, but to please yourself. Read books, attend seminars, join fitness groups and make friends with health-minded people. Weight control is not a vanity trip. Keep your focus on improved health and the weight will take care of itself. Number four, join a support group. Changing lifelong habits is probably the most difficult thing a person can do and the process is very threatening. Faithful, regular meetings with a support group greatly increases the chances of success. This team effort is a must for those who are more than 20 pounds overweight or who have had problems for more than 10 years. Support groups supply motivation, encouragement and reinforce the determination to persevere. Number five, focus on health. Look for a weight control plan that is consistent with a lifetime of good health. This will include regular exercise, a low-fat, high-fiber diet and a physical, mental and psychological outlook that meets your needs in every area of life. Weight control should be only part of a full and meaningful life, not its main occupation. Such a life plan is workable. Many have succeeded. Put your heart into it and make it there. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. You were listening to Dr. Chitra talk on diet. I'm sure it was helpful. To know more about our program, feel free to write to us at Adventist World Radio, Post Box Number 17, Pune, 411001, Maharashtra, India. And now... Here's a song from the Melashenko family singers entitled How Long Has It Been?
burden Since you knelt by your bed And prayed to your Lord up in heaven How long since you knew that he'd answer you and would keep you the Lord night through. How long has it been since you woke with the dawn? Time now for Bible Talk. Join our hosts Gary Gibson and John Bradshaw, speakers for Amazing Facts Ministry, as they now open the Bible and discuss the theme that will affect your life today. Stay tuned. The next 15 minutes will deepen your understanding of God's Word. Hi, and welcome to Bible Talk, where we talk about the Bible and how the Bible affects us today. I'm John Bradshaw. With me is Gary Gibbs. Hi, Gary. Hi, John. We have a very interesting topic today. We're going to be looking at how can you maintain a a vibrant spiritual walk with God. Today, we're going to discuss some of the biblical keys to spiritual success in the Christian life. Let's talk about something that is perhaps one of the most neglected aspects of the Christian life today. And I mean this all across Christianity, across all churches, and among Christians as a whole. Let's discuss today how to have a real, vibrant, strong, devotional life and be connected to God. It's so important because I think a lot of times as Christians, what we're depending on to maintain that that Christian feeling, that, that feeling where we want to serve Christ, where we're following the Word of God, we depend upon the pastor feeding us, spoon-feeding us once a week, don't we? Yes, that's very true. Um, too many people make that mistake. Going to church is good, I think, a necessity. Receiving the Word in a church setting is great, but what do you do the rest of the days of the week? Well, you have to eat yourself every day in order to maintain your strength. And it's the same way in our spiritual life. You know, Jesus said in John chapter 15, He said that we have to abide in Him. And if we abide in Him, He says in verse 4 of John 15, that we can then bear the fruit of a Christian life. We can have patience, we can have love, we can have joy, we can have long-suffering. All these fruits of the Spirit come by abiding in Jesus Christ. But you're not going to have that if you're not spending daily time with God. Jesus described the relationship he wants to have with us as being that like a, a branch connected to a vine. Now I've got grapevines in my backyard, plenty of them. And here's what I know. When it's time to get out there and prune them, you take those those uh, pruning shears and cut off one of the branches. When there's a disconnect, that branch shrivels up and dies. Jesus wants us to be connected to him, the, the parent stock. It's only when that connection is there that we can be healthy spiritually. Let's talk about how to have how to maintain a healthy connection with Jesus. You know, in in our world today, we are so busy. Uh, There's so many things demanding our time and our energy that by the end of the day, people are exhausted. And then they get up the next morning and they're right back into it on the fast-paced track of life. 
So where do we find this time, John? Where do we find the opportunity to spend with God? And, and how much time do we really need? Okay, where do we find it and how much time? Firstly, let's establish you got to have it. You've got to have that time with Christ. Relationships are made out of time, aren't they? If you're not putting time into the relationship, before very long, there's going to be no relationship there. We've got to take the time. Where do you find it? Now, I'm thinking of the Bible, sorry, the verse in the Bible, in the Psalms, Psalm 63, it's verse 1, where the psalmist says, early will I seek thee. Now, that indicates that ideally we ought to be spending time with God early in the morning. And it's not a bad thing to do. That was Jesus' example. That's a practice that he had. In Mark chapter 1, 35, it says, In the morning, rising up a great while before day, Jesus went out, found a solitary place, and there he prayed. And so it's a good practice. Uh, in fact, John, you'll remember the story about the uh, children of Israel as they were exiting Egypt. You know, they spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness before they entered the promised land. Uh, every morning, they received something very special from God. What was it? That was the manna, the bread, if you will, that came down from heaven, that manna. And Jesus says in John chapter 6 that that manna it represents his word. And the children of Israel had to go out early in the morning before the sun came up to get that bread. It was, it was a little tiny seed, and they ground it into flour, and they made bread. And they could not keep that overnight, or it would rot. So daily they had to find the bread. And Jesus is actually giving us an illustration there. Daily we have to feed on the Word of God ourselves if we're going to have strength to live for Him during that day. Now, if they didn't go out and get that uh, manna early, after a while it would just melt away and dissolve. You think that's saying that if we don't spend time with the Lord early, chances are the opportunity is going to dissolve and we just won't get that time in? Well, practically speaking, I know from, from experience that's exactly what happens. If I don't get up first thing in the morning and spend that time with God, the, the busyness of the world just comes crashing in on me. I have to find that time with God. But, you know, what if, what if I'm not a morning person? Does that mean I've, I've missed my opportunity? What would you say to that? I'd say when, whenever your day starts, start with time with the Lord, if at all possible. Generally, that's, it's possible. Whenever your day starts, that's where you start with the Lord. Now, if your day is so busy, maybe you just want to get out of bed just slightly earlier than you do, if that's possible. I'm thinking, though, of the moms who are saying, man, you don't get it. I've got these children and I'm so busy. And the dads who say I have a hectic schedule. What do we say to mom who says the day just starts with babies crying before I'm awake and I just can't find time? Yeah, many mothers, that's their alarm clock in the morning is the baby screaming and hollering. I know I've, I've got one child. The way she wakes up is she wakes up crying. But we try to get up before that. And I'll tell you the truth, actually, John, even with the children, once we get the children started for the day, we find our quiet time. We still take that time. My, my wife is very religious about that, and so am I. We find the time to spend with God. And we're setting an example for our children. It might be different for different people, but somewhere there you've got to find that time quiet time, right? Away from the hassles, away from the distractions, just you and Jesus, so you can really connect. And, and you know that in this day, you, you've given your heart over to Christ. You've allowed him to, to, to see to it that self is dead. He reigns on the throne of your heart. That's how you're going to have peace and a really settled uh, going forward in your day. Now, the first thing we've talked about here then is that we need a time every day. And some people might not be morning people. Their brain just doesn't function real well. And maybe they'll spend less time in the morning with the Lord, but they need some time with him. And maybe their, their big bulk of time is later in the evening. But we need a time, no matter where we find that time. But we also, I believe, need a special place to do this, a, a, a kind of a little ritual, a place where we go to, we have our books, we have a comfortable place to spend time with God. I'm going to get to that in just a moment. Uh, I want to encourage you listening today to get a hold of our special free offer that we have for you today. We've got a tremendous book that we want to share with you. It's called The Armor of God. You'll be blessed. So get our telephone number, grab that uh, address we're about to give you at the end of the program, and call or write and ask for Armor of God. You'll be charged as you read this. You'll be blessed. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident it'll be a real addition to your spiritual existence. Gary, the place. Where do we find the place? Well, you find the place that works for you. There, there was a time where I was planting trees many years ago for a living. 
And this was a winter job yeah, down in the southeastern United States. And it's dead of winter and it's very cold because it's kind of a wet, damp cold that just cuts right through all the layers of clothing you put on. Well, I was living, John, in the back of a... Uh, of a pickup truck, essentially. It was one of these camper sh- trailers uh, that slide into the pickup truck bed. Yeah, not much room in one of those. No, and I was sharing it with another gentleman who actually owned it. And so every morning I would get up and I would have my Bible reading time, my study time. But to pray, and I like to pray out loud, to pray I needed to go outside. And, and going outside meant going out into 30-degree weather or below that. And so I would go out, and I had a little pup tent, and I would have that time to pray. So I always had a place to go. Now, that's the most extreme. Now, today I have my office. Uh, my wife, she likes to have her quiet time in our living room. But we always have a place to go that's kind of part of our ritual where we have our books, and we can sit, and we can be comfortable, and we can think about the Word of God. It's important to establish a time. It's important to establish a place. We've talked about this a connection, establishing the connection through prayer. There's a lot we'll say, I'm sure, at another time about prayer. But prayer is not only it when it comes to your devotional time. You've got to spend time in the Word of God. Am I right about that? You really do. You have to, and, and that's often a challenge because how many times have has someone picked up the Bible? And I know I've done it myself where I start reading and it's just not speaking to me. I'm not getting anything out of it. And so how do you make the Word of God come alive? Part of that is going to be learning how to mine the Bible, learning how to mine the Bible and find the gems in there. Another part of this is, you know, you get the people who say, I'm going to read the Bible through this year. It's my New Year's resolution. They start in Genesis. Man, and things are going great. They get into Exodus, and that's pretty cool, too, with Moses and the plagues and Egypt and the Exodus. By the time they get to Leviticus, the wheels have fallen off the chariot. They got bogged down like they're in quicksand. Someone says, I'm going to start reading Ezekiel. I'm going to wade through Jeremiah. Nothing wrong with that. But a lot of people aren't going to clearly hear the voice of God speaking to them where they are and about what they're dealing with. So if you go to the Bible and find those parts of the Bible that speak to your heart, Mm -hmm. read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts, and, and some of the epistles of Paul, and go to the Psalms and the wisdom of the Proverbs. Don't worry, my advice is, about the parts of the Bible you, can't, you cannot understand. Work at those and increase your understanding. But if you go to the parts of the Bible that speak plainly and clearly and you can understand, oh, there's so much in there, you're going to grow and be blessed. And there will be some days where you will study Leviticus. It's, it's like when, oh, sure. when I go to eat, you know, you don't eat the same food every day. You get tired of the, the same meal. And so you have variety. And some di- days you go out and you eat Indian food. Another time it's Italian. Yeah, those would be good days, both of them. <laughs> if we invite you to eat, I think any day is a good day for you, isn't it? Amen. So it's the same way when we come to our spiritual diet. Sometimes I want to study Jeremiah. Other times I want to read First John. And so it's how I am led that morning, how I feel, what, where my appetite is. I think it's important, too, as a person is, is spending quiet time with God, that that's what it is. You come to the Word of God and, and let the Lord lead you by whatever means to whatever part of the Bible you're going to focus on. And then not just read it for reading's sake. But read it and listen for the voice of God speaking to your heart. That's important. It is. You personalize the Word of God as you're reading through it. What does this say to me? And then I like to pray about it. After I have my Bible study time, I like to actually kneel in prayer and talk to the Lord about what I've just read. And I I personally like to pray out loud. I find an example in Jesus. He prayed out loud. You find the psalmist must have prayed out loud and others through the Bible because we have their prayers recorded. Sure. Yeah, that's right. And so as you pray through what you have learned, it actually makes it more real and personalizes it. There's another character in the Bible who uh, had a real connection with the Lord, and that was Daniel. Daniel is someone who prayed three times a day, obviously fed on the Word of God. And when you get down to Daniel chapter 6, Daniel's in a jam. His life is on the line. He's faced with a death penalty. Is he going to be faithful to God or is he going to recant his faith? He's faithful to God. He goes home and he prays. And just to read that is a, is a powerful passage. He goes home. He's in his house. He's in, a, in, the, in, a, in the regular room. Uh, uh, he kneels and he faces Jerusalem. He does it not once or twice, but three times. I mean, if my life was on the line, I might come, I might come to your house and go to your garage or your tool shed and pray so nobody's going to see what I'm doing. But Daniel is open about this. He's, he wants to be faithful. Notice the key in Daniel 6 and verse 10. He did, he did what he did aforetime. 
that was his habit. That was his daily practice. So when his life depended on uh, on faithfulness to Christ, his spiritual life was on the line even, he was faithful because he was always faithful. His entire life sprung out of that personal time with God. That's why he was able to uh, live for God in the midst of a uh, very pagan culture and to always be God's man. And in our day-to-day activities, we need God with us every moment of the day, and it will spring out of our quiet time in the morning. The time for Bible Talk has come and gone. Thanks for being with us. We look forward to seeing you next time for more on this subject. With Gary Gibbs, I'm John Bradshaw. God bless you. We believe you are enjoying the program. Bible Talk was presented to you through the courtesy of Live Talk Radio. You are listening to The Voice of Hope, from Pune, India. We are sure you found our program interesting and beneficial. You may have questions regarding God's Word. We invite you to write to us. Our address is Adventist World Radio, Post Box Number 17, Pune, 411001, Maharashtra, India. That's Adventist World Radio, Post Box Number 17, Pune 411001, Maharashtra, India. You can also email us on amc at pn2.vsnl.net.in. That's amc at pn2.vsnl.net.in. With this, we come to the end of our program. Be sure to tune in again. I am Sharad. And I'm Maureen, signing off from Adventist World Radio. Until then, may you have good health and enjoy all the blessings of our loving God. Goodbye.